When we first came to the United States from Thailand, my family had a tough time with money. My parents, taking care of me and my two siblings, went through a period where it was hard to afford things. Getting enough food was a daily challenge. This went on for a few months until my dad got a job as a trash collector and my mom started working as a janitor in a hospital. Even though these jobs helped us have a more steady income, we still wanted a better place to live. After working hard for a year, my parents decided it was time to find a more permanent home. The condition of the house wasn't as important as how big it was because we just needed a spacious place for our family. After looking for a while, my dad found an old house. It wasn't in the best shape, but it became our new home. Despite it being old and not perfect, it was a big step up for us. Moving into that old house made us thankful for the stability and safety it gave our family. Even after we settled into our new home, my parents continued to put in long hours at their usual jobs, rarely finding time to be at home. Despite the age of the house, I didn't feel any negative vibes from it. The only reason it seemed old was that it hadn't been lived in for many years. As long as the house could shield us from the weather, it provided a comfortable living space for our family. A few months after we moved into our new house, my mom chose to leave her job as a hospital janitor. Working late hours in the hospital always gave her creepy feelings, and being someone who easily gets scared, she wanted to find a different job. After a bit of searching, she landed a job as an egg packer, which paid well. Following her decision, my dad also quit his job to join her in this new job. My parents discovered a new house for us to move into, and it turned out to be a bit newer than our previous one. We didn't know much about the history of this house, but the rent was more affordable, and it had a more modern feel. We made the decision to move in, and as a 12-year-old back then, I was drawn to the new house mainly because of its better condition. At that age, I didn't have a deep understanding of what makes a good home. Despite the positive change in living conditions, my parents continued to work tirelessly, often leaving early in the morning and returning late at night, maintaining their busy schedules. We lived there for about four to five months, and everything seemed normal until one night when something strange occurred. I heard three loud knocks at our door and assumed it was my parents returning from work. When I opened the door, there was no one in sight, just an empty doorway. I leaned out to check, but it was all silent. It was only 9 p.m., not the time my parents got off work, so I closed the door. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind rushed into our house, sending a chill down my spine. The wind carried a foul odor of rotting meat smell, and I, being the only one awake while my two siblings were asleep, felt a wave of fear. Hastily, I fled to the second floor, flicked on the light in my siblings' room, and sought refuge by sleeping alongside them. Wrapping myself in a large blanket, I tried to find comfort amid the unsettling scent lingering in the air. I had dozed off for a brief moment, and out of nowhere, I felt the presence of a person sleep beside me. 
This person gently used their hand to embrace me in bed, much like my mom typically did when she returned from work. Assuming it was indeed my mom, I continued to sleep peacefully through the comforting gesture. The following morning, I woke up and noticed my parents were nowhere to be found in our house. Since they provided us with a phone for communication, I heard it ring. My parents explained that they wouldn't be able to make it home today, just like last night, and assured they'd be back the following night. This revelation made me rethink who had been beside me the night before. Perhaps it wasn't my mom after all, and now fear started to creep in. I decided not to share this unsettling experience with my younger siblings, opting to keep them blissfully unaware. Wanting to distract myself, I went to play with my friend. They were my neighbors and we were around the same age. As we played into the afternoon, I ended up at a friend's house where their mom brought up a surprising question about any spooky occurrences in my house. I totally forgot about the incident I had encountered last night, the knocking, the bad wind smell and someone sleeping beside me. I continued to reassure her that we had been living there for a few months, and while our parents worked late, we hadn't witnessed anything spooky in our home. In a hushed tone, she mentioned that if everything seemed fine, that was good, but I could sense that she felt something might be amiss within our house. They tried to convince me to stay for lunch with them that afternoon, but I refused and told them that I had to return home to make lunch for my younger siblings. As I approached our house, I heard the unmistakable sound of my two younger siblings crying. When I opened the door, they spotted me and rushed toward me with a mixture of relief and excitement. I took my younger siblings outside, wanting to know what happened. My nine-year-old brother told a scary story, that when I wasn't home, they got hungry and went to the kitchen. There, they saw a dark figure with a face that looked like a dead person, and it had long messy hair. When it turned to look at them, my brother got really scared and started crying. This made my little sister also cry too. Their crying stopped when they saw me opening the door, and they ran toward me for safety. As my little brother told me about this spooky encounter, I started feeling really uneasy and didn't want to go back inside our house. Even though I was scared, I had to be brave since I was their older brother and told them not to worry, and that we should go inside together and I will make lunch for us to eat. As night fell, there was still no sign of my parents returning, so I took it upon myself to prepare dinner for us. While we were eating, I caught a quick glimpse of someone darting swiftly from our front door to the side door outside our house. Assuming it might be a shy friend from the neighborhood who decided to play a trick on us while we ate, I called out, Hey! Who were there outside. The silence that followed made me uneasy and scared simultaneously, as no response came from the mysterious figure. I hurried my two siblings to finish eating so we could head to our room to sleep. Feeling scared, I turned on all the lights in our house. While in our room, my little brother needed to use the restroom and asked me to go with him because he was afraid to go alone because of an earlier encounter. 
I waited outside the restroom door and unexpectedly dozed off, entering a dream. In this dream, a lady dressed in white approached me, saying, You guys living in this house need to stop making noises, or I will be angry. I sensed her anger as she walked away. She had a rope around her neck walking slowly, I could see the rope extend down to her body. Suddenly, my little brother woke me up, mentioning he had been trying to wake me up for at least five minutes. We decided to return to our room, and as we walked, we heard the shower running as if someone was inside. We wanted to go back and check. When we tried to walk back to turn it off, then the water shut off on its own. Despite this, we convinced ourselves we might have misheard the water running. Upon opening our room door, we caught a glimpse of someone standing by the window, watching my little sister sleep. This sight scared us. As the older brother, I reassured my little brother not to be afraid and insisted there was nothing to worry about. At midnight, I abruptly woke up to the sound of a lady crying <laughs> loudly on the first floor of our house. It seemed like a group of people surrounded her, and she cried and yelled for help. Despite having turned on all the lights earlier, everything was now pitch dark including our room. Feeling too scared to investigate, I chose to go back to sleep. I woke up again at 3 a.m., hearing footsteps going up and down our stairs. Uncertain whether they were ascending or descending to the first floor, I then heard the water in the restroom turn on and off. The footsteps descended, and a pot cap in the kitchen clattered. All went quiet after that, and I fell asleep again. The next morning, I found my two siblings already awake and playing downstairs. It was 8 a.m., so I prepared breakfast for us. In the afternoon, I went to my friend's house and shared the eerie events with his mom, who looked genuinely shocked. She asked if my parents were coming home that night, and I assured her they were. She kindly offered her place for us to sleep if needed, which I appreciated and thanked her for. My parents arrived home around 9.30 p.m. that night. When they knocked on the door and called for us kids to open up, I eagerly welcomed them with a big hug. After placing their things on the right side next to the door, they inquired about dinner. I explained that we had already eaten, and my younger siblings were asleep. Despite my usual routine of staying awake until my parents returned, this time I sensed something odd in their behavior. Typically, they would have dinner, take showers, and then go to bed. However, this time, they hurried us to go straight to bed. I found it strange but shrugged it off and joined them in bed. Around 10.20 p.m., I heard another round of knocking on our front door, sounding just like my parents calling us to open up again. Confused, I turned on the room light only to find that my parents weren't in our room except us siblings. Panicking, I rushed to the door and opened it to find my mom and dad looking like they had just finished work. My face turned red, unsure of what to think and scared at the same time. My mom noticed my distress and asked me what was going on. I asked them to go to our room, I explained to them that around 9.30 p.m. earlier, 
I heard them knocking and I opened the door to them and even hugged them. Then, now, I heard them knocking again. I rushed to the door and opened the door again. I asked if they were home earlier. Now, my parents were as shocked as I was as it was the first time my parents knocked on the door that night. My dad said it wasn't them earlier, and I had opened the door for something or someone that's not human. Fearful, I asked them not to take a shower and to stay in the room with us, and they complied. The next morning, I shared everything with my dad, recounting the strange occurrences we faced when they weren't home. However, my dad remained skeptical and found it hard to believe. On the contrary, my mom, being a more open-minded person, took my explanations to heart. She urged my dad to stay home with us, suggesting she could go to work since we were all scared to be alone. That night, around midnight, my dad experienced sleep paralysis. In his dreamlike state, he saw a ghostly lady in a white dress with a rope around her neck open the door and rush to hover over him. Despite his attempts to move, she held him down, even kicking our blanket to the floor. Feeling the sudden chill, I woke up and saw his struggling figure. Worried, I tried to wake him, and eventually, he snapped out of his sleep paralysis, fully awakening. In shock and fear, he hurriedly turned on the lights in our room, visibly shaken by the eerie encounter. My dad couldn't sleep that night and decided to stay up and watch us until morning. In the morning, he told me to make food, and he wanted to rest since he was tired. After eating, my friend came and asked me to play. I wanted to let my dad know before going, so I went upstairs. When I opened the door to his room, I saw him in the same state as the night before, moving but unable to open his eyes. He was having sleep paralysis again, so I rushed to wake him up by shaking him. He woke up with the same look on his face. This time, he went downstairs to be with my younger siblings. I went out to play with my friend. My dad didn't tell me what he saw in his sleep. I returned home in the afternoon, and he asked me to stay with my younger siblings. He wanted to talk to the elders. I called my siblings to come outside and play. We picked flowers in our front yard. My mom came home early, and my dad arrived later. We had dinner and went to sleep. A few days later, my parents decided to talk to my friend's mom. My dad explained his sleep paralysis, and my mom shared what we kids experienced when they were not at home. My friend's mom took them to a room and disclosed that before we lived there, an American couple used to reside in the house. They constantly argued, leading to their separation. After they left, two college girls moved in. One night, my friend's mom heard what seemed like a lively party with lots of people and yelling. The next morning, she and a neighbor went to check the house since last night there was all kinds of loud noise coming out of that house. They found one lifeless girl hanging on her neck, while the other one was fighting for her life on the ground. They called the police, and the paramedics took the surviving girl to the hospital, but the hanging girl had already passed away. 
My friend's mom said that people buried her right outside of our house. Shocked by this revelation, my parents immediately packed our things, grabbing only what was essential. We moved out the same day, choosing to live with a cousin temporarily until we found a new place. Thank you.